Hey guys, this is Alexis. Welcome back to Sofa Leather. In this video, I'm going to be stitching these firefighter suspenders. These are the Dragon Slayers. You can see I already marked my holes. I'm going to be stitching just from the tip all the way to the back here, just one side. I kind of want to time myself. So fair warning, number one, I know my shirt is buttoned the wrong way, but that's just so that my lapel mic can get closer. That's my excuse. Second thing is, this is not going to be a how-to. In the description below, there's going to be a playlist called Leather Tips and Tricks. I have a video on how to saddle stitch and all the nuances like uh, the thread length, um, pricking irons and all that stuff. So check that out down there. This is simply just going to be me stitching the one side. This is about 30 inches, a 30 inch run. I'm only going to do one side um, and then I'll do the other side another time. But I just want to see how long it takes me from here to there. That's all I'm going to do. We're going to start the process. The only time I'm going to stop the camera is if I'm going to move for a different angle but I'm gonna film the whole thing. So it's gonna be a long video. I'm assuming it's gonna be about 30 minutes for me to stitch that. All right, if you have any questions, please refer to that playlist. I have little videos on all the little nuances, including the stitching clam that I use, pricking irons, stitch length, how to saddle stitch, different directions saddle stitching, all that stuff. All right, talk to you later, bye. I do have a video on how to do this, by the way. I was trying to be quiet and make it ASMR, but it's really hard for me. But I do have a video on this. On actually how to thread this thing. So like I said, watch the video. I'm gonna end up <laughs> commentating as I do this, but this is Ritza Tiger Thread, 0.8 millimeter thread. I use that for everything. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I forgot this. I made a video on it and everything. This is where it really comes in. Yo, HSAP, hand stitch aggravator preventer. You guys gotta check out that video I made on this thing. Should be smooth sailing from here.
I've calculated, not including punching the holes, but just doing this right here, I can get like a minute per inch. I don't uh, keep in mind that I'm using a spacer five stitches per inch. So, which really yields six holes. So six holes will yield five stitches. That's one inch. So I can stitch five stitches. I'm sorry, six holes, which gives you five stitches. I can do one per minute. So that's where I come up with this 30 inch run would be about 30 minutes. That's if I move this fast. Sometimes I can get it down to 45 seconds for an inch. Um, but a straight run like this, especially with this new design, HSAP, this piece of cardboard down here, really helps big time. Cause that, that's the biggest thing that slows you down. It's starting to slip a little bit, but I'm trying to be fancy on camera. Let me tighten it up. The camera is really close, so I'm afraid I'm going to hit it. This customer wanted white stitching. I find that fascinating. Some people just like that traditional. But I do have every Ritza Tiger Thread color. And that's one of the major reasons why I went with 0.8 millimeter, because the 0.8 millimeter Tiger Thread, you can get in all colors. The one millimeter would be ideal. This will be kind of chunky. But they don't offer every single color. Um, not only that, but the needle that's needed for the one mil is a lot bigger. And this needle makes this a lot easier for the 0.8. I shouldn't be talking, it should be like ASMR, but I can't help myself. We'll take a look at the back here in a second. Now I am doing this crazy cast in the back. I'm not even gonna go try to explain that right now, but uh, watch that video on uh, how to saddle stitch is on my playlist. And it goes through all that. Because truth be told, I'm starting from the tip working my way this way, and then I'm gonna start again from the tip, work my way this way. This way I could hide the, uh, the back stitch with a piece of leather. So I have to run this opposite when it's time to do the other side. And unless you understand the, the saddle stitch and how the threads relate to each other in that hole, uh, it'll come out inconsistent and not that nice. So you really gotta watch that video. I'll probably overdo it, but I kind of want you to grasp the concept. Once you understand the concept, then you can run this many different ways. Good side on this side, good side on that side, going backwards, going towards you, going away from you. Then you can really understand the relationship of the needle and the hole and the thread, the way they cross over. Anyway, I'm supposed to not be talking. But now I'm on autopilot, so I can talk. You know, this is almost mindless at this point. Um, I'm literally not thinking about how to do this, it's, it's just second nature at this point. I made the cardinal mistake of touching my face with my fingers. Now this is gonna be slippy, slippery, I said slippy. Just gotta be careful with the tripod. I'm sacrificing for you guys because my fan is off and it is Africa hot. I'm in central Florida, so it is pretty hot. I'm gonna see if I can get closer to these threads on the camera. I might have to put my camera on my table. So give me a second, I'll run down to here. Just wanna show you the back. And the reason why I do a cast over is to accentuate that angle. I could machine stitch this, but I think I made a video on the reason why I didn't. I don't want to. It's because I spent so much time tooling it. Like, uh, I'm afraid my machine is going to booger up and skip a stitch or leave a mark. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I know a lot of guys that do really well that tool their stuff and they run it through their Cobra Class 4, but I don't know. Sometimes I miss hand stitching like this. And truth be told, 
it's gonna, it just takes me an extra three hours to hand stitch these suspenders. And I don't mind the solitude. Um, and working out my calluses on my stitching fingers. And also, my boys are gonna basically stitch the rest of the stuff. So, I'm legit gonna have them stitch the rest because they know how to stitch already. So that'll free me up. I gotta finish up a couple wallets and I gotta start another bag. I should be not talking. I can't help myself. All right, let's move the camera angle. The depth of field's a little shallow, I see that. So we'll stop it when it gets into the blurry zone. I'd say I'm over a quarter of the way there. I'm like a third. And I think it's been like 10 minutes. I guess while I'm here, I guess I'll tell you a couple couple tips. You're gonna see it on that, that uh, how to saddle stitch video. But uh, don't let go of your needles. If there's a knot that forms up, don't let go of your needles. Try to weave stuff through, don't do that. If you hold on to your needles, there's no way you can create a knot, okay? Like I said, autopilot <sighs> becomes second nature. If you ask me to go <laughs> my right hand first, I probably have a seizure. Like I can't go this hand first, right hand, and then I just can't do it. I'm sure I can learn. It doesn't affect the stitch as long as you understand the relationship of the thread and the hole. I, sometimes I have to do that when I'm making bags, but I really have to spend a lot of mental energy trying to make sure I'm doing things right. It's just not second nature. Going left hand first is basically autopilot for me. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can do it the way it's most comfortable for you. Um, Over halfway, it's been 20 minutes, 15 maybe. I think I didn't cast that over. I did. Sometimes I move too fast and I don't know if I cast it over or not. But I did. That cast over is going to give you that nice stitch in the back. What matters too is the way you punch the holes. That's going to actually determine if it's straight or if that's going to start walking on you a little bit. But when they're wearing this, you can't see it unless you leave it flat on the table and you can see it. If you shoot down, if you look down the, the line, you'll notice that it's walking a little bit. You can't really get away from that. This is a handmade product. 
but uh, the way you the way you mark the the way you punch the holes is going to matter. And I think the biggest thing is consistency. So however you're holding the tool, and whatever kind of unique nuance that you're doing that, make sure you you stay consistent with that, because um, consistency is a key when it comes to saddle stitch. If you can do it wrong, do the whole thing wrong. Because as soon as you switch it up in the middle, you'll, that'll be really noticeable. So just stay consistent. If, if, I have, if you have to learn one thing, learn that you don't need to button your shirts offset in order to have the lapel mic closer to your mouth. You could just move the lapel mic. You don't have to intentionally unbutton your shirt and button it off, off center, but whatever. I'm trying to stay professional, but it's really hard. Oh, you guys caught me, I'm not wearing shoes. I swept up all the brass. Don't judge me. Well, I'm gonna sue myself. I have to get that. All right, well, that wasn't really an important phone call, but whatever. Uh, I don't think I went all the way through on that one. I'll just do one slow one for you, just so you see it. Left, right needle behind. Push this forward, go on the bottom of the hole, cast, over, done. All right, that's it. That's all the instruction you're getting today. If you want more, just PayPal me uh, $1 million, please. Thank you. I'll allow it. I'll accept that. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> okay. Guys, I'm really sweating bad. It's your fault. I am two thirds done. I'll have my boys finish the rest, like I said. I might film it, I don't know. Let me know if you guys want me to film my boys hand stitching this. My oldest is as fast as this, to be honest with you. He really is, he can do it this fast. But he gets kind of a little arrogant. And I catch a mistake every once in a while. And I start freaking out. You guys don't see it, but I get really mad. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Pay attention. So I'm a little hard on him. You don't see it, but he needs it. You know, there's certain expectations and standards we gotta keep up with. So I told him, I'd rather you do it right than do it wrong and fast. Do it right and slow. But he wants to prove to me that he can do it as fast as me, if not better, which I don't mind that competition because it kind of pushes him. So, but there's a de definitely a delicate balance for sure. But if you guys want me to film my kids hand stitching, let me know. I already did a video a long time ago, probably like three years ago. You ought to see him now. He'll be 14 here uh, pretty soon, like in a couple of weeks. And uh, he's getting big, man. My oldest, they both are getting big. Elijah, my youngest is already big. He's the, the bigger one, but you don't see it really while you're with them. But if you look back at old videos and pictures, it's, it's absolutely crazy. All right, this is not about my kids right now, all right? I gotta pick up my kids here in a little bit. 
perfect. Perfect timing. I could probably do the other one before I have to pick up the boys. I could do the other side, but I'm not gonna do that to you guys. I don't know, maybe I got 15 more stitches, maybe. I got like three inches left here. Oh no, I hate when this happens. When I close the clam, I close the stitch in there. Clam or clamp? I always don't know the answer. Clam, C-L-A-M, or clamp, C-A-L, I mean C-L-A-M-P. Clamp, stitching clamp or stitching clamp? I know a lot of guys say clam, but is this really a clam? Stitching pony, stitching horse? I call it a stitching clamp, I don't care. So it's not really a clam. A clam looks like a clam, this is like a clamp. You guys know what it is though, holds the leather so you can stitch, all right? We'll call it leather holder. We'll call it the leather holder. Almost done guys. And then I'll show you at the end. I got sweat going into my eyes right now. The hard thing is you can't touch that sweat with your fingers because it'll really prevent you from grabbing these needles. Right now, they're, my fingertips are kind of tacky from the wax. As soon as I touch my face, I ruin that. So maybe grab a towel or something or just go do leather uh, leather working in Alaska. Do people even sweat in Alaska? That's something to think about. I'm basically done. Like, okay, not really. But I always like to have about this much at the end because believe it or not, you don't want the exact amount of thread because when you tighten it, you don't want, you don't want to have to tighten. Let's say this is all the thread you have like this. It's really hard. You want this little bit of length like that to be able to maneuver and manipulate the thread, grab it, pull it. So I always give myself a little bit extra for this reason. Cause I have like a system where I go like this and I catch it. If it's too short, you can't do any of that. And it gets, it actually takes longer. So something to think about. I meant to tell you, the only reason why I'm only doing half and not the whole is because it's actually faster because you don't have to pull that much thread. If I had to get enough thread to do the whole thing in one shot, then you're spending way more time pulling the thread uh, through the hole. And I found that splitting it up like this 
is actually faster. Even though you have to uh, create new thread, that's still a lot faster than than uh, doing it one piece. My bags, like my my gusset, I have to do that in one piece. I don't like splitting it, and I don't I don't want to see a knot. So right here is where there's going to be a piece of leather, and that's where I'm going to hide the back stitch. I'm going to do that right now. This is the last one. You won't see this. And even still, it's not that critical, but to me it is. You can't like pull it through. You got to snap it through, by the way. You can never just pull it through. You got to snap it through there. See, it's still not that bad. This hole could be kind of pain in the butt. Oh, I thought I could do it. I tried to be cool, but it didn't work. I have to grab those. And that's it. All right, let's go to the outro. There she is. I think it was like 30 minutes, maybe 25. But uh, I still have to tap it a little bit. I'm gonna wait till I finish the whole thing. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. God bless you. Bye.